Honestly guys, I think this is quite possibly like one of the smartest strategies that anyone has done for this game so far. Like look at that. He just freaking, oh my lordy. Oh, hi. Welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today I wanted to do like a low rarity kind of showcase. I want to show you guys a whole bunch of different strategies and a whole bunch of different people like that have shown you really, really innovative ideas. Some really underrated three and four stars in particular the fire units because that's all we have time for today. But I think we're finally starting to get to the era where we're not all just going to like unga bunga at all. And some people like with some really big brain strats are actually going to be like, hey, actually you can do it with all of these low rarity units. It's kind of like the age of Kirsten V from Ark Knights, if you guys know what I mean. However, it is like a significant investment for like knowledge, I would say. There's actually so much like time and like brain power required to come up with some of this stuff. And so like kudos to everybody. However, with that being said, let's start talking about these underappreciated three and four stars. And so let's start with Alice. Because I'm going to be really honest, I thought Alice was like the worst healer until I saw this video. And this video right here that I'm about to show you is probably the video that actually inspired this video like that I'm making right now. All right, I'm just going to shut up and play the video and so as you can see here what we're gonna see is Alice's skill can consistently prevent death this is honestly pretty insane but you guys just have to see it yourself so essentially they're gonna activate Alice's active and so what's happening here is that she is actually going to take damage and then recover after she takes damage and so this is actually such an interesting like interaction so let's just freaking do it so as you can see she is getting her skill activated and she is about to get her ass kicked by this Umbra Hulk wait it's not an Umbra Hulk it's Hecaros okay well yeah, but okay, so she's about to get smashed. What the frick, hey? <laughs> you would think that we die here, you know what I mean? Like, we're on 1% HP. I don't know if you guys saw, but like, we were on 1% HP up there. Like, look at this, and then like, suddenly, we're on 10% HP. Oh, wait, not there, but like, over here. Okay, not there, but over here. Okay, not there, but over here. Like, <laughs> this is just so, so freaking funny. I've never seen this kind of interaction before, but like, I guess that's just how it's calculated. To be honest, I don't know if this is intentional behavior, like for the skill. I know like reading it out, it makes sense that this is what would happen. But for you to be able to prevent death, to go to 0% and then heal up to 10% immediately after, I think that this is so fun. It essentially grants you invincibility like every two or three turns, right? And so with that being said, I dub Alice the best healer of them all, not the worst. But like, come on guys, like fighting against Nadine, fighting against Phyllishai, fighting against Uriah, like it's actually pretty hard to be a good healer and well, <laughs> there are no bad healers now. There are only bad navigators like me who underappreciate our four star healers. All right, and so with that being said, let's move on to the next one. So I hope that was really interesting. So Fight Jackal, well, thank you for bringing this to our attention because this is super cool technology. And so guys, this is the one that I do want to show you guys next. This is by Fujihita. Fujihita has put together a team comp and like I think I first saw this on the JP servers, but essentially the idea behind this is that the Nitium trial where you like farm for the money, you bring in an A3 Chandra that has like her equipment to I think about level five. And then so if you do hit the bonus stage from the Nitium farm stage, you are able to like nuke down every single one per turn. And so that's a really interesting concept, right? So let me just like refresh your memory. This is kind of what the Nitium stage looks like. And so you are fighting the chariot guy here. However, what we are most interested in is actually the bonus stage. And so here you can see Chandra is finishing off that boss. And so let's see what happens here. The bonus stage is about to be triggered and then we are going to get the new king. Oh my gosh, this is actually really, really freaking funny. And so what's about to happen here is that the Chandra is about to get her active skill gone. She is going to like pretty much send a nuclear missile onto each one of these guys. And then she's going to get a refresh so that she can use her skill again. And you can do this to every single one of these guys down here. And so as you can imagine, after you've wiped out like all six, I think per stage, it's gonna go into the next round and then you're gonna be able to do it again, essentially. So, okay guys, so the rest of the video is essentially Chandra like nuking down these guys. However, I do have to put the caveat on it that this is Night Team 4. And the reason that this can only be done on Night Team 4 is that like typically speaking, the investment required to get Chandra to be strong enough to nuke these guys in Night Team 5, it's just like a significant amount of effort to be able to nuke down these guys with one of Chandra's actives. At that point, you kind of start questioning like, is this actually worth it? And so yeah, that is what people have been doing for Night Team 4. And like on top of that, you can see that this is a red team and you can probably activate Aurora Time. I also see an IC over here. And so what you can do is if you go Aurora Time, you can actually probably like trigger another wave. And so how exactly would that look? So I think what's going to happen is that the Chandra is going to finish off these two and then it's going to be a completely blank field. However, what's going to happen is that the next mobs are actually not going to come out 
until you make your turn. And then so what he will do is he will get Icy to put a few more red tiles down on the field and trigger Aurora time. Because technically speaking, he's made his move and so like more mobs are actually going to come out. And so I think that's actually exactly what happens. So like let's watch her nuke the last one and then yep, Icy skill. And then next I think he's just going to trigger Aurora time and then he should be able to just like keep nuking them. So we got to heal there and then yep, there we go. Okay, so he's actually added this extra bit down here. This extra wave can only happen once. And so I guess what that means is that all you need to do to prepare for like this stage is to make sure that you at least have one Aurora time. Personally, I don't actually use this strategy. I just like do it the old school way. But like if you guys do have a bit of time, I probably would recommend this because not only are you getting a pretty big gain, like he's saying you get a 76k bonus harvest, which is more than the amount of like bonus I get when I do my like 19.5 farm. But also on top of that, you get to level Chandra, who's pretty cute too, okay? But yeah, you guys can weigh up whether this is actually worth it or not. And like, let me know if you guys do decide to invest into this strategy. But to finish things off, like all you're going to see is Chandra is just going to like, you know... <laughs> do all of that and at this point you can actually set it on auto i think well i hope so i hope you can set it on auto that'd be a little bit weird if you couldn't but yeah again a big shout out for this one to fujihita i'm pretty sure i saw this like from a jp guy first but this is just a really solid video that showcases like the capabilities of like this freaking little three star but yeah thanks for showcasing this because this is really freaking cool and so actually on this vein i want to talk about this one over here which is essentially the same thing exactly however he is putting in an uriah instead and the fun gimmick about this one is that he has ordered from start to end. I think this is a very, very interesting take on this one, but like if you're gonna be doing this, like I would say you might as well do it like better, which is like this. Like you've already invested into the A3 Chandra, and I think at the end of this one, you only get like about 30k. Like at this point, you might as well just like go the whole hog, do a little bit of manual and get like an extra 45k. That's pretty big. But yeah, that is another option if you are like into like the autoing for it. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump into our next one, which is the Thunder Spire F43 clear with no RNG low rarity. This is actually insane. The person that came up with this is just like he was very very methodical and he was very very good at what he did. And what I mean by that is that like he came up with an idea and then he like put together the pieces to make this idea work. And then he spent a lot of time like actually testing it and it turns out it did work. And so yeah, massive kudos to Very of 10 for actually putting this together. Okay, so let me give you a brief description of what exactly we are trying to achieve here. For you guys who have not made it this far yet, this is floor 43, which is actually like one of the hardest stages in the game, I would say. Most people traditionally, they have to put together like an almost full A3 team before they are able to beat this. However, what Very of 10 has actually done, Very of 10, yep, Very of 10, what he's done is he's essentially put together a whole bunch of low rarity units that are going to help him achieve what he wants to achieve. He's got a strategy in mind, he's got a game plan, and he's done actually analysis on all of the boss patterns and all of that. Like look at all of this, like by the end of this, he probably has such a deep understanding of this one stage. It's so funny actually. But this really is like the ultimate showcase of low rarity units and how useful they can be. Before we jump into the strategy itself, let me introduce you to these characters. Unimet is an awesome converter, she has a 1 CD cooldown for a one tile conversion as well as like a random item drop. So let me show you case that a little bit over here. Bam, see, converted to yellow and dropped an item. Next we have Amy. And so Amy's role here, I guess, is to be like the sustain as well as like the passive healing. This is so incredibly important, especially for like low rarity team because like these two bosses, they chunk you like crazy. And then after that, we have Eho. Let me show you Eho. And so Eho essentially has a short range teleport massive. So, so massive. Teleports are like seriously like your most simple skills. However, they're probably one of the most important. If you guys have not seen my last video about converters and teleporters, well, essentially all I'm doing is like praising converters and teleporters. Then go check it out because I go through exactly like why converters and teleporters are so good. But yeah, back on track, I believe it allows you to teleport like two clusters. Let's have a look actually. Yep. So as you can see here, teleports to any tile within two surrounding clusters. Like <laughs> look at the running animation. That's so cute. Bam. And so let's move on to the next character who is Schwartz. I believe Schwartz is a five star so he's technically not low rarity however the good thing about Schwartz is that he does like percentage damage if I'm not wrong yep so as you can see Schwartz's active skill does 10% of targets current HP in damage to all enemies honestly that's pretty freaking massive but on top of that look at that sweet sweet equipment massive defense boost again like this stage the defense requirement is just so high these guys hit so hard however the star of the show well the star of any thunder show really is Tessa most people who understand Tessa actually 
actually do believe that Tessa should have been a six star. And so I want to show you guys what exactly that entails. So how Tessa works is that she actually builds stacks from other people using actives. So here is Tessa's description on her equipment over here grants a Tessa mark. So it's exactly as I said, every time you use an active skill, you get a stack. And then when you finally activate the active skill, it clears all of the marks. So this is just like pretty much like a massive stored energy. And then you go bam. And so you guys are probably going to want to see that. So look at this Tessa. She is not being used because she is gathering those stacks. Look, six of those spanners. I don't know why they use spanners, but like it is what it is. Now we have seven and then we're going to have eight and then we're going to have more and more. We're up 12 now. We're up 15 now. We are still building stacks. All right, guys. So Tessa is at 19 stacks. Let me show you Tessa's fury. So let's play it here. I think we still have Schwartz's skill. So we're actually going to be at 20 stacks, I think. So come on. Yep. 20 stacks. And then here we go. Look at that, 44, 42% HP. Keep in mind guys, like these are not easy enemies. 38, 39, more like zero, baby. Oh my lordy. Look at that, seriously, look at that. Guys, I know I really hyped up Tessa for this one, but really I should be hyping up this guy very of 10. To be honest, using Tessa is like pretty easy. All you have to do is hold on to her stacks and then use him when like you want to actually nuke someone. But what this guy managed to do was he actually put together, I think like four low rarity units and cleared one of the hardest stages in the games with it. That is honestly such a massive achievement. And like, again, kudos to you very of 10. But yeah, aside from all of that, you guys can already see like how these low rarity units, like some of them, they can be really, really busted like Tessa. And honestly, on that note, there were a couple more that I wanted to talk about, like such as in the fire archetype, you've got Nails, this boy over here, as well as Brock, this boy over here, and we've got Kafka. Unfortunately, I have run out of time because if I keep going, this is going to turn into like a 30 minute video and we don't want that. Nobody wants that, right? And so with that in mind, let's start wrapping up this video and I'll probably come back with a part two. Well, if you guys enjoy it enough, let me know. All right. So with that being said, let's talk about the secret message and that is low rarity because low rarity units are still really really underappreciated in this game like one of my favorite units in the game is peppy right now like look at that at zero turn cd teleport like oh my lord like the amount of problems that peppy could solve it's like the list goes on and on she could probably solve world hunger as well to be honest but again if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video but otherwise please consider a like a sub a comment a follow a pin you guys already know what to do but as old mate tessa once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.